Some people are of the opinion that talking about dark, scary, uncomfortable things should be avoided because talking about them and thinking about them feeds them and gives them energy. So you should just not put your energy there. Other people think that if you see a baby eating dragon, you go directly in and slay it. You don't avoid it. In this episode, I'm going to draw a little from both of those positions by offering a healing perspective about showing your work in math, compassion fatigue, and triaging emergencies. Hello, welcome. The work of the Empath Podcast intends to be a fertile oasis in difficult places. May you hear and receive exactly what you need. Shout out to my friend Leanne, who helped inspire this episode by asking me what I thought about the claim that asking black students to show their work in math is a racist thing to do. My answer is that history and research can help make little black children better at math than they could possibly imagine. Because diving into that historical research reveals a few relevant things. It shows that the concept of zero itself comes from Egypt that the abacus, the original calculator or counting device, comes from Egypt, that the construction of pyramids is a mathematical wonder in itself. And it also shows that those claims have been hidden, twisted, distorted, contested, This is so much more meaningful than merely showing your work. All little black children should be reminded that not only are you capable of math, your ancestors conceived it. True education requires intellectual honesty. And also something that has been sorely missing from the public conversation this entire time. And that is care. C-A-R-E. If a building were to be leveled or demolished, and it was known that that building was filled with asbestos, lead, and other toxic materials, Extreme care would be used and demonstrated during the demolition. Because without it, you just go and you just start swinging wrecking balls and you see the harm created in that. The poisons and pollutants that get released far and wide. That's exactly what's going on now. The toxic structure of systemic racism is being analyzed which was a good and needed thing, but it's being done carelessly. I observe a few levels of carelessness. One is that I think all of these conversations should be grounded in self-actualization, first and foremost. So in other words, before asking a classroom or a workplace to change for me, My first task is to connect with my origin, with my source, and to be sure that I am full and complete in that way. It's a mountain of work, but when that work is done, it changes everything. You go back into the classroom differently. You address injustice and inequality from a different level. So I'm not recommending avoidance of hard conversations, 
I'm recommending preparation for those conversations. And so then after the black being has earnestly done her work, his work of restoring herself from narratives that, yes, disenfranchised and disempowered her, but she came into an insight, which was also a responsibility, and that is that her destiny is hers. His destiny is his. Despite unfair beginnings, if an educational or religious or political structure has failed to recognize your divinity or even your humanity, then perhaps it would behoove you to look outside those structures for your wholeness and your restoration. But I want to get back to the public discourse that I've been observing for the past year. And in the absence of care, it's been like a runaway train. Radical, revolutionary conversations happening, which at times have gotten hijacked and conflated with other agendas tossed in. Confusion at all levels is at an unprecedented high. Noble causes and noble words are thrown around and diabolical deeds are done under the virtuous labeling. And then when you get mountains of money in the mix, it just makes for a very confused output. So while this social reconstruction Social deconstruction has been happening. It has created a new understanding of the term social distance, social distancing, because I just wonder how your relations, your racial, interracial relations have been affected, how your opinion of certain groups of people has been affected over the last year. What I'm saying is that <laughs> in the pursuit of changing and improving structures, we've done a lot of harm and damage to our stories with each other, our connection with each other. There is a powerful medicine, a powerful solution that most of us would be able to put into practice, depending you know, on what we have access to in our lives relationally, but daring to have honest and vulnerable conversation with someone on the other side of the gene pool. And rather than tackle it by the centuries, rather than tackle it by the karma, by the felt enormous weight of it, tackle it one human story at a time. And be willing to be a witness of the other. So I know my pain, right? I know the pain of my ancestors, of my history. And as I every day choose to cooperate with my own expansion and with my continued evolution and maturity, then I am interested in how I could also be a witness for the pain of others, the fear or the sense of insecurity of others. Because at the end of the day, if you have managed to garner enough generosity, enough care and consideration to be able to spare some with another, it means that you have amassed more than enough for yourself. How do you transmute greed? You transmute it with generosity. How do you transmute racism? You transmute it by evolving your heart beyond it. And then finding the ability, making, creating, becoming the ability to extend a hand to reach across the aisle, to be a bridge. Regardless of your identity, 
regardless of how you define yourself, if you are human, there is a looming technocratic threat facing you. And it is much more sophisticated and much more dangerous than the racial conversation. It's hard to even wrap your mind around that because it would seem that this is like the most diabolical thing that could be. So it is a little bit of a bummer to say, no, actually, that's not as bad as it can get. But that is the truth. There is a plan in development that threatens the way that we understand human existence. And it's unfolding right now. While we are, as they say, rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. Is that really the best use of time and energy right now? This is what I mean about triaging emergencies. It is, of course, of the utmost importance that humans learn to treat each other in dignity, period. You know, with dignity, period. Regardless of the shade of your skin or your genitalia or your psychology, you deserve dignity, period. And while we micro nano dissect that conversation in another room, there is something so much larger in the works. And yeah, this might count me as an alarmist. And I'm taking the risk of being that person because I recognize that these are alarming times. We are going to have to wake the heck up. And that means having enough discernment to understand what conversations need to have priority. And I'm saying that if food supply is being threatened, then guess what just went down in triage? If you're hungry and you don't have access to food, how bothered are you going to be about whether or not you're asked to show your work in math? That conversation will be a luxury to have. You have to have a full stomach to even have that debate. I don't know a graceful way to enter into this conversation. I apologize for the fact that my tone can jump to 100 but it's a reflection of the times that we're in and the hypnosis that most are under. I believe we can give this story a beautiful healing plot twist. But we need each other. Be the cause and not the effect. Our thoughts and words, the world reflects. This show has been brought to you by EmpathicWriter.com.